good sis. We are joined <laughs> in the How Good's This podcast studio today by uh, one of my oldest friends that I'm actually still like in contact with quite often. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of friends, oh, um, but uh, <laughs> I do. I have quite a few friends, but um, but uh, Jess is a friend that I see and hang with quite quite regularly. Uh, Jess and I grew up in Chewila together. Yes. Um, and what's fun, it's hilarious because I drive my Sprinter van out here mm-hmm. to the lodge. Every, it's like <laughs> absurd. It's a, it can fit 42 people in it. I know, it's it. a huge one. I s- just saw that. It's like driving a, bu- a yeah, bus, it is. essentially. Mm-hmm. But up from my touring days, thumbtacked to the wall, the ceiling, is a picture of you and I in high school oh, at good. some dress-up party. Oh, that's awesome. You look amazing. I, I look mermaid. like I, I look fourteen. <laughs> you probably you were. I think I was my. <laughs> that's a good age. <laughs> I should have said seven. That would have been a better joke. Um, uh, but I'm I'm pretty sure that I got the picture. I was trying to remember, like, how did this get thumbtacked up yeah. here? Because all the shit thumbtacked on the ceiling mm-hmm. got up there during tour. Yes. And it was, I think, right after your your husband mike passed yep. you came out on the road with us you yep. met us in portland maine yep i sure did and uh and i'm pretty sure you brought that picture and we sure. thumbtacked it to the ceiling <laughs> and it's still up there <laughs> which awesome. whichever brand of thumbtack that is <laughs> shout out shout out <laughs> test of time <laughs> because not everything we've we've i've got like a a hospital katie marler's hospital bracelet up there still <laughs> i've got a brent what was she Rus- there for what? What did she go for? I think she had like a. Was it worthy of putting the putting the band up, or was was it just like some? Yeah, no, she was. I think she had like a urinary tract infection. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Katie Marler. Oh, it's like a discharge hospital band. Oh my god. That's yeah, awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. And so we she <laughs> gave it, out. She gave it to me. We thumbtacked it up there. Brent <laughs> Rosano's first driver's license still up there. <laughs> so random. Um, but. There, we probably had a full wall of shit thumbtacked up there, and only a few things have stood the test of time. Awesome. And our high school picture together was thumbtacked. Yeah, that was such an interesting time because you and I, Jess, um, we have so many things to discuss and talk about. Yeah. But uh, you and I were you you were an upperclassman. Mm-hmm. You were a senior when I was a freshman, or you might have been into college by the time that I was in high school. But you yeah you were part of the cool crew man <laughs> and like i was this skinny weird uh <laughs> the hot senior come on you were a hot Jess. senior and i was a, a little aloof freshman <laughs> I can't even imagine but uh you were always super sweet to me but we were never like super no, tight i was closer to your sister kaylee we were in the same class so <laughs> kaylee was kind of like my friend who was like are you saved? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were we were on the evangelical tip during high school. But she was great. I still love Kaylee so much. She's awesome. So she is a legend of a human. Just is. recently moved to Spokane. I know. I'm stoked about that. I gotta Joyful, joyful. Yeah. Um but it was after high school that you and Mike uh started coming to these shows <laughs> that I was having at this place called Sonic Burrito. Yes, gotta love Sonic. And I would have a three-hour show there, like, every, like, Wednesday or mm-hmm, something. Something. I would play Billy Joe's Piano Man. That's my favorite. Eight times. <laughs> I would play it. There'd be, like, five people in the audience, and we'd all be, like, singing to it with you. Yeah, you brought four of them. <laughs> and uh, through that, man, you and Mike, like, kind of took me under your wing when I moved to Spoke. I remember, Aww. like, poker nights yeah, at your house. Yeah, we had poker night, yep. And, uh... And Mike, um, unfortunately, passed away from melanoma cancer, yeah, correct? 2011. Yeah. In 2011. And um, you called me and said, hey, like, can I come just well, out of... Well, first I had you come play at his memorial, remember? Oh, yes, of right course. Right before Conan. Yes. And I had no idea. I hadn't kept up with anything about what you were really doing for the last couple of years, probably. And... So I reached out and just was like, would you be up for coming back to our high school gym to sing uh, Let It Be yeah. for Mike's Memorial? And so you did that, which was super sweet. And I had no idea that you were like, kind of at the time, like you were getting your foot in the door. You were really starting to blow up. You were like on Conan like a week later. 
I was like, no freaking way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like felt bad because I was oh. like, can you go like to my high school gym and sing? Our high school gym. Whatever. Um, and you're like on Conan like a week later. So I would, uh, I would have done anything for Mike yeah. because Mike was same. He was a senior when mm -hmm. I, no, excuse me. Mike, he was my grade. Yeah. So Mike would have graduated by the time, but Mike and my brother were pretty yes, good buddies. Right, right. And I remember Mike would always come over to my house when I was like in seventh or eighth grade. Aww. And he was one of the only like older guys mm -hmm. that would give me the time of day that Aww. would like actually talk to me. That's sweet. Like my bro was cool, but all his buddies were like this youngster, mm -hmm. like he's going to tattle on us for like, <laughs> you know, looking at Farrah Fawcett videos <laughs> on the internet or something. And Mike was always super kind and sweet to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would have, I would have flown sweet. back from Conan <laughs> to, uh, to play at that memorial. That was pretty special. Yeah. But you, you, you called me after mm -hmm. um, three, four or five months. I'm not sure the yeah. time frame after the memorial. You're like, Hey, I want to. Can I come out on the road with you? Yeah, I'd been traveling quite a bit, so I was kind of just like up for anything at that point. And let me tell you, you were up for anything because yeah. you opted mm -hmm. to jump inside a Sprinter van <laughs> with like six gross, stinky <laughs> men and just travel all over the country. You were out with us for like two and a half, three weeks? It may have been close to two weeks definitely all over the east coast and then i literally had to like fly home and i had 24 hours before i had to leave for africa for a month so it was like this crazy turnaround i like took six months off after mike passed away and just traveled continuously mm. and so everything was just like come home leave again like plan another thing to do and then just leave it was just really busy and yeah so it was definitely a whirlwind was that uh was that busyness intentional totally. to try and keep your mind occupied? Sure. Yeah. It yeah. was like the best way to distract myself. I was just constantly planning trips to keep distracted. And yeah, I mean, I was by myself a, a lot of the time right. on those trips, but it was like, at least I was researching and seeing new places and having an adventure that made me feel distracted. So for sure I was like running away if that's what you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to distract myself and that was kind of just my way of, Thera therapizing. <laughs> Ther what therapizing. was the word? We, 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 we would <laughs> say, uh, Steve says, therapizing. Yeah, there you go. Therapizing. Therapizing myself. Uh, Jess, how long, how long were you together with Mike? And um, when did you guys meet? You yeah, we, high school, obviously. So, yeah, we went to high school together. We were just friends in high school. And then we got together like the summer after my our freshman years. And we're like, oh, this is just a summer fling. We'll go back to college at our separate colleges. And then it ended up being too like awesome to walk mm -hmm. away from. So it was like eight years um, married for six years, I think of that um, before he passed away. So he'd had melanoma the first time a year after we got married in 2005, just a spot on his leg. And then they removed it and it was like this big surgery. And then we were almost to the five year mark, which is usually when it's like you're unlikely to get it to come back mm. and then it came back like right before the five-year mark like everywhere yeah. bones you uh. know liver everywhere and then we only had five months after that yeah it happened fast it i remember fast. hearing yeah. that he was sick again and then yeah. it felt like oh my god that, I, what yeah we felt like we were like racing against the <laughs> clock the whole time to like try and find a treatment that would work, you know, like just anything we could do to try and slow time. Were there any treatments that, you know, my mom's currently going through mm -hmm. uh, chemotherapy mm -hmm. and were, were, were there any specific treatments that really was helped? Um, yeah, he did a clinical trial in Seattle first that in, it was oral chemotherapy. So he take, would take these big pills and it seemed to reverse it and kind of slow it down for like a month. Mm -hmm. But then you could tell when it stopped working because mm. he had to start increasing his pain medicines again. Mm. So he was on massive doses of Oxycontin and you could tell when it was getting worse because his dose would have to keep going up and up. And so, yeah, you could tell. And then we moved to LA for like two months for another clinical trial and that was not successful. So end up, yeah, actually ended up paralyzed because the cancer closed around his spine oh my god so yeah towards the end it was like bed bound we had to take like a medical flight to even get him home mm. in order to p pass away at home mm. because Jeez. he couldn't get on a commercial flight so we had to like fly in this ambulance plane to get home it was crazy 
Yeah. So you, so a few months after mm-hmm. he had passed, um, you, you, you were a jet setter. You just hopped on yeah. flights and you traveled and you. It was the one time I felt like I had been away from work long enough to, there was no reason for me to go back right then. I was like, there's no way I could, you couldn't function. I'm, I'm a pharmacist, so I can't like be distracted sure. and mentally like not there in order to safely do my job. So yeah. I was like, right now I'm off. I'm just going to keep traveling and doing some things for myself right now and just kind of figure out what I want to do with my life. And I knew I never wanted to go back like full time. Yeah. And that was always something I like promised myself. I'll never go back like working myself to death and being overly stressed, which I'm kind of creeping into that arena right now so Mm. i'm having some life challenges (laughs) trying to figure out what i'm going to do from here on but so i'm working towards reversing that so i don't you know get into that realm of feeling like i'm not finding the balance anymore yeah well you've done you've i mean you're quite uh you're 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 a quite incredible human being jess i i um i think about everything you've experienced up to this point and how much fervor and desire for life and Mm -hmm. experience that you have i mean you uh you and your partner chris you guys travel Mm -hmm. every chance you get and coming and from from somebody who travels for a living i see your life and i'm like oh yikes (laughs) yeah but we're in detroit and she's in like mayorka that's a very good point steve (laughs) is he always this far away he is unfortunately we're gonna get a situation yeah going where steve can be in the same room as us but unfortunately the the, the way the room is set up the cockpit you just hear this voice of god yeah. every so often <laughs> they like keeping me in the pit in the Mr. dark steve. <laughs> it's actually we best when you just hear him laugh yeah exactly when, I he, when laugh. we when we get some chuckles out old stevie baby <laughs> it, it's the best part of the pod but last night the winds were going 190 miles an hour Crazy. and i think stevie maybe didn't sleep as good as he Aww. so i'm not sure how many laughs we'll get out of old stevie <laughs> baby because he's he he had a pretty stressful night we'll i think some. we'll get some has anybody told him that bears are an apex predator and so steve she that was the first thing she came in and said no. <laughs> bro she said no. she looked it up <laughs> no she's um, fact checking man so so uh <sighs> This is a maybe a a difficult question to answer from your own perspective, but if you could um, define Jess Carpenter pre Mike's passing and Jess Carpenter post Mike's passing, mm-hmm. was there some like was yeah. there must have been a gigantic totally. shift? But can you like from your own perspective mm-hmm. see what that is? Yeah, that is an awesome question. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, pre Mike Carpenter death um, was, I was more, I guess, family oriented. Like I had goals of probably being a mother Mm -hmm. and I, some of my goals are the same. Some of what I want out of life is definitely the same, which is like simple life, Mm -hmm. having a rooted place here in, in Shuila area. Mm -hmm. Um, That I'll always probably want. Um, but yeah, I think I pictured my life being different than, and more like probably mainly being a mom Mm. and probably I've always wanted to travel. I've always loved traveling. So that's always been a passion for me, but I definitely didn't think I would try to like turn it into a second career and make such a, a life out of it. Um, yeah, post Mike's passing, I definitely am more. Sque- trying to squeeze the juice out of life mm. for two almost yeah yeah it's course. like i almost feel like mike's life got cut short and i'm trying to live for both of us in a way yeah it's like he didn't get to like do all this cool shit so i feel like i have to do it for him mm. and like double up on it i of guess course. i don't know so i mean i'm not the best at always following my own advice and you know making the most of my time because i feel like sometimes i'm stuck in situations that I'm not necessarily totally content with, Mm. with my job and stuff, but I do try to squeeze the most out of everything as possible. And I feel like I'm doing pretty well. You're kicking ass, but you're doing such a good job. You're a, (laughs) you're a joy to be around. You're uh, an incredibly kind and encouraging and supportive friend and human being. Um, Had you ever been that close to death before? No, definitely not. 
So that that must have just been such a it's a wake up call for wake sure. Wake up call, yeah. It is. It's yeah. I mean, I mean, and even that, the farther you get away from it, you still take things for granted. Of course, mm. you still go mm. back to like feeling like, oh, I've got lots of time. Mm. You, no matter how much you remind, try to remind yourself today could be my last day or whatever. You know, you still, of course, live like you're going to live till you're 90 years old. Right. But, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely a, was a wake up call for sure and made me feel like you really can do whatever you want to do with your life mm. and this might be our only one mm. i don't pro you know propose to like know what's going to happen after this i used to think i knew but i definitely don't know mm. so this might be our only shot yeah. <laughs> so there seems mm. like there's something that's even more heavy and effective from a, the death of of your significant other mm -hmm. that like i i still have both my parents i still have my siblings mm -hmm. i've never lost a loved partner yeah. like that you know grandparents and cousins other things like that which hurts mm -hmm. in and of itself you know there but thinking about losing your partner yeah is, is, is because something that's like more what massive. part of your like it's identity your, hinges totally, on totally. yeah it's like half of myself was i mean we grew up together we were together since we were like eight, 18 or 19 and so it was like i kind of became an adult with right. this person so it's like half of who i was was because of him and mm -hmm. So, I mean, I definitely have, like, lasting parts of myself that I got from him, which I'm really appreciative of. I mean, Mike was an awesome, caring human being. Legend. Like, I got a text message from, or an email message the other day from um, a kid who was in school with us that is quite a bit younger. He's younger than you. And he was, all he said was basically, like, I just wanted to share a memory of Mike mm. that when we were playing football, some of the other kids were picking on me. And Mike told them to knock it off and smiled at me. And I never forgot it. Mm. And it was like, like, oh, I just started like bawling my crying, eyes out, yeah, man. Wow. I get things like that from people all the time. And I'm just like, God, he was so like good. Yeah. His <laughs> parents are awesome. They just raised such good people. So yeah, for sure. But um, I don't even remember where we were at. But. It's just the effectiveness of the, oh, of, yeah. of a, of your romantic partner yeah. that you're married to. That yeah. You, especially a, when they're, exactly. uh, I mean, I'm sure there's cir circumstances where some people are not as bummed to lose their <laughs> yeah, uh, romantic probably. partner, but yeah. you know, it sounds like this guy was <laughs> right. So, I'm, just, I'm just saying, man, I'm sure it exists. I'm not saying people are like stoked on it, but when you were really like truly, truly, yeah. you know, it, we were like truly best friends. Like, yeah. And, awesome. and, and he seems to have been such a yeah. legend to so many people that yeah. I can't, I can't even bear to yeah, think and you, about you hinge your whole your whole future on like your plans together. Right. So then mm -hmm. you're kind of just like a blank slate and have to like refigure out what your path is. It's mm. crazy. You, but you, but you did and you yeah. have yeah. And, and you continue to. And, yeah. and I think that's why you're such an inspiring person Thanks. and that we like spending so much time with you. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the, the way that you approached moving forward from that experience, kind of where Alan was touching on earlier mm -hmm. about, being a jet setter and getting on the bus with him and yeah. <laughs> going on yes. the road and then coming to New York. You, that's when I met you. Yeah. And, you know, I met you, you on you, tour with Alan. Yeah. yeah it, and you like, were like, come back to New York. And so I did. Yeah. 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 I remember yeah. kind of when I got that call from you. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, I told my band mm -hmm. that like my friend Jess was going to come out and travel with us. And a good amount of the guys in the band were single. <laughs> and I was like, look guys, here's the scoop. <laughs> also, like I didn't know how to toe that line. Yeah. Cause I was like, I don't want you hitting on her, mm -hmm. but I don't want her to think that you wouldn't hit on. Like <laughs> I was trying to put myself in your place where you're like, I'm, I'm I've just been <laughs> widowed. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I, it was so confusing to me to try and like think about the way you might have been feeling and attempt to be a good friend in that oh. moment because that's thoughtful i wouldn't have even <laughs> whatever well it was just, you know i was just there for a good time you should have been there to tell me that you yeah. you, 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 yeah, were right. <laughs> you were amazing but i you know naturally is like somebody who i would consider myself a brother type yeah. to you when i think about you know, you called me, you're like, hey, I want to come out. I'm like, fuck, man. It's like, got, okay, but I got some dudes in the band, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, I remember the first day you came on, you, <laughs> we met you in Portland, and I had told everybody in the band, I'm like, here's a scoop, okay? So I awkward. gave them, like, the the checklist of, like, <laughs> this is my friend, like, she's my pretty much my sister. 
Mark Sampson, bless his yeah, heart. Mark. First thing he says, he goes, hey, like everybody's like, "Hey, man, I'm Jason. You know, I'm Jason. Yeah. I'm Trevor. I'm uh, Laura was there with us. I'm Laura." Mark Sampson goes, "Hey, I'm single." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Mark, you fucking idiot. <laughs> but Mark was one of those guys, bless his heart, man. Mark passed uh, what would have been two years ago. Um, man, he was one of those guys you just couldn't be mad at. Yeah, you he, mentioned that. I didn't realize he'd passed away. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was an incredibly awful. unfortunate situation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Mark, we lost contact with Mark yeah. pretty much. He ghosted. We, we had a gig in texas i think it was and he no excuse me we we were in austin i think we had a layover in dallas he got off the flight in dallas right to like go in the airport mm -hmm. and then we just lost track of him mm -hmm. and then literally never heard from him again so weird so random like texted him facebooked him like he just straight disappeared mm -hmm. And then it wasn't until, you know, four or five years later that we had got word. So Jason mm -hmm. had got word from somebody related mm -hmm. to Mark, like, hey, Mark passed. Wow. Um, super sad. But man, it was so sad. Gone way too soon. Because, yeah. man, when Mark was, I have so many fond memories of Mark Sampson. <laughs> Like I'm sure you have some some too that you can rifle <laughs> everybody off. Everybody on that on that sprinter, I had a great time with everybody. I mean, Greg, Trevor, yep. everybody, they're freaking awesome. Greg's coming and staying at my place this weekend, actually. He was telling me that, yeah, man. That I'm made me so happy. Yeah. Um, I offered up my uh my cabin, and and uh, he says, ah, I think I'm gonna stay in Jess and Chris's brand new beautiful home with like, <laughs> with with Wi-Fi and hot water. I was like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> we got VHS tapes of Nancy Drew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's bringing his pizza maker, so we're gonna make mm, up some pizzas. Uh, what a legend, man! Yep. That's uh, that's super cool. So, you're a pharmacist. Yes. You um, you make your living uh, dealing drugs. Indeed. It's been a been a a, a dream of mine since <laughs> since the first time I watched Johnny Depp in Blow. <laughs> <laughs> um was that like a have you always been interested in no. chemistry or was this like a safe thing no it was a safe thing for yeah. sure i actually always hated math and science mm -hmm. um yeah I'm more you have to know math yeah you gotta do some calculations really yeah and it talked to me about that because I mean, I, for school wise you gotta go all the way through calculus but in pharmacy we do math like calculating dosing on different things so really? it's not super hard math it's pretty easy math and you get used to the same types of calculations so it's pretty easy but well easy math is pretty subjective is, to the mathematician true. and Very i believe true. that the two gents sitting across <laughs> from you might find easy math is a little bit different yeah, than definitely. you Perhaps. i'm good at fast math he's yeah. pretty good at adding stuff in his head i would be so well, julian what's 1247 <laughs> times 14 oh, oh, come on times <laughs> is it uh, plus or better uh He's working know. it out, bro. That's Give ridiculous. him a second. I need a calculator 000, for like double digit ad addition. 800 and maybe, I don't know. 16,000. That's way faster yeah. than I would. I always would have blacked out and mm -hmm. fell out of my seat me if too. somebody I asked mean, me math. Somebody's going to like do that on their phone while they're listening to this and be like, no, dude, it's definitely <laughs> like 38,000. He's not even close. Alan's totally. all impressed. I mean, as long as you just say an answer with <laughs> conviction, people are like, oh yeah, dude, that's what Alan does all the time. He just says the shit. He just says it with conviction. You're like, oh yeah, it sounds like <laughs> that's what I That's what I do. I'm that's like, dude, you're not telling the truth. He's like, what? I'm a pastor's <laughs> kid, bro. <laughs> That's all you need. Um, That's awesome. Wow. I didn't yeah, really no, need pharmacy was never a thing. Like, a lot of people in Chihuahua go into pharmacy for some reason, but I never thought I was going to. Um, I actually was really into English. I really love writing, and I oh, love English. You're a great writer. You're a great writer. Yeah, you're a blogger. What's yeah. it, to Tell everybody your blog. Oh, yeah. my I, I started a travel blog. First, it actually was just to retell the story of Mike's passing from, mm -hmm. like, a post-death perspective yeah because i was afraid to talk too frankly while he was still alive because okay. i used to write while he was alive but it was you can't be pessimistic when mm -hmm. somebody's still alive um so post death i was able to be mm. more like this really sucked like yeah. <laughs> this is what was going on um so i did that and then once i kind of came to the end of the story i was like what do i do with this website that i've like created so 
and amassed like a good amount of people who yeah who, who yeah read it and follow um it. so i had called it when i first decided on the name for it i called it my feet will lead me.com and the kind of just the i guess idea that you put one foot in front of the other and it'll eventually you'll come out on the other side somehow yeah, better of course um but also because when i started traveling every time i traveled something bizarre with my feet happened it was weird so i would either oh, get like stress fractures or like i got like a f um foot rash from like a nail salon in hawaii um like my foot swelled up in africa like in tanzania from a bug bite and i had to like prop my foot up in the back of the safari vehicle for like eight hours and get antibiotics it was just weird things with my feet which have never happened to me before um <laughs> <laughs> super random so yeah so anyways i started the blog as like the cancer story and then i decided just to transition it to travel blogging and i was like why not make this into kind of a second job hobby um so yeah so i just started writing travel itineraries travel recommendations um posting lots of pictures got really into photography and um started doing instagram and um yeah so photography and instagram and blogging kind of became like my second side hustle and it's a passion for you it's for sure. totally a passion yeah, yeah you take, it was you take amazing mm -hmm. before you got absolutely into yeah i've always loved traveling i mean when i was in my dorm i had like um like from the travel agents like brochures like plastered over plastered all over my walls from like bora bora and all the places i wanted to go in my life and you've been checking them off yeah so yeah i've definitely always been obsessed with travel i just didn't really get to do as much of it until the last few years as i wanted to so yeah so my feet will lead me as my blog um and then my uh travel instagram is just jessica underscore traveler and so that's where i post pictures from actually traveling but we should thank uh your dude chris i know for chris all the is pictures so good he he's so you. awesome <laughs> i know yeah so he yeah so i instagram I husband fell in love with chris like a year after my husband passed away we had mutual friends like didn't really know each other never really saw each other um we had mutual friends and we kind of just met and kind of hung out a little bit and started chatting and um he's older than me so our like paths hadn't really crossed because we just had different circles but mutual friends and mm. so yeah once we started hanging out we just kind of were like well this is awesome like we're really drawn to each other and had both kind of he had come out of a relationship and I of course had my situation we were both kind of like, we're both kind of like a little effed up, but <laughs> let's just yeah. go for it, go for this, yeah. I guess. And it's been so amazing. Like Chris had never traveled to any orbit like Canada when we first met and now he's been to like 30 right. countries wow. and yeah. God, 30. Yeah. I counted wow. them the other day, 36 for me, which actually is not, there's like 198 countries. It's like, feels like I'm just a, drop in the bucket but we're also young so yeah we hopefully hopefully lots more but i can't believe you i felt when we were living in chuila it mm -hmm. felt like because i obviously travel for work yeah I travel like a freak yep and i always felt like just jess is traveling just as much as i am yeah. <laughs> i was like how did how what, what is happening here um i remember we bumped into each other at uh, portland airport oh, yeah. and like you and chris <laughs> got off like you were walking down the aisle and i spotted you i was coming <laughs> out of the gate and you guys look like fucking zombies oh dude. totally you guys just, oh my god and i came up i forget what i did but i scared the <laughs> hell out of yeah, you, you did. <laughs> and um where's the coolest place you've been you reckon um every time anybody asks me that i always say italy yeah italy will for forever be my favorite country it is the best of everything food wine coffee where scenery every part of it wow. they got good water parks there i <laughs> don't know <laughs> okay maybe not every part of it but like tuscany i like a good wave pool steve <laughs> uh, i like no. to swim in other people's germs yeah um no Wow, Italy's Italy Italy seems is amazing. The best. I, if if I could, I, I'd love to uh, rewind a little yes. bit, just because I'm super fascinated by both of you guys coming from this little tiny town called yeah. Chuila, <laughs> and the people that come out of it who like do these amazing things. Oh. Um, and and there's only two of us. 
Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else. Cheers. Everybody. Come on, man. Don't, don't. I'm Look just, at Paul. Yeah, Paul's pretty cool. No, there's so it's many it, oh, rad people yeah. that come He's out of Chewila. Everybody's cool from Chewila. Yeah, there's yeah, good we've people. Like five, we've had like a quarter of our guests Hazen's on this podcast rad. from Chewila. Yeah. Hazen, Hazen just stayed the night at our house the other night, too. Yeah, yeah he's <laughs> good people, man. Yeah. He's good people. He hits you up and he's just like. Yeah. Wild hey, boy, dude. He's wild. I call, him wild. I call him wild boy. Okay. Yeah, he is a wild boy, man. His was my favorite podcast. I was like jaw dropped the entire time. Like You sent him to us. So thanks oh, for so thanks awesome. for referring yeah, him over. Yeah, no problem. Um, anyways, I, I'm 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 just fascinated. I've I've obviously gotten Alan's story from just getting to know him for so mm-hmm. long. But um, how did you how did you wind up being the type of person you are? Like, you, how did you wind up going into pharmacy school when you wanted to write? Where did you come from? Yeah. Why, like, what were your parents like? You seem like you're just a really level headed human, especially after going through the trauma that you faced mm-hmm. and uh, coming out on it really positively. Um, I am pretty level headed. Yeah, where where does that where do you get that from? It must be your parents. It's my mom. It's yeah. not my dad. It's my mom. Okay. My my dad's pretty like I, I don't know, I get some stuff from my dad. Like the constant like reaching a point and then wanting to achieve something else and mm. like getting somewhere and feeling like it's not enough. Mm. Wanting the grass is greener. The grass is greener on the other side. I get that from my dad. So I'm constantly like I just built a brand new house. Now all I want to do is sell it and live in a van. Shut up. I'm totally serious. Oh, I am so yes. messed up. So, so oh, Jess, up. your house is so cool, dude. It's nice. It's so super but cool. Can I buy it? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for like real cheap? No. Because <laughs> I still owe way too much on it. <laughs> Bro, me and Jules, we'll go have this. <laughs> Jules has been storing away some it is nuts a pretty over the winter house. time. I'm rich. <laughs> Homie's I don't been, know if you guys know this about me, but <laughs> Homie's been I eating am rich. He's been eating Ladies. straight bib lettuce from Costco. <laughs> yeah. He's been saving his pens. Yep, trying to get that two pack. Um, <laughs> wow, I can't believe your your house is amazing. It is lovely. You, I know. I really do love it. I will but, try and figure a way to do both. But, but you say you just get that from that that side. I get from that your dad. from my dad. I get my level like emotional stability from my mom. Mm. She's like the strongest. Like been sh- been through so much and she's just like this rock of mm-hmm. like stability and awesome like my mom is like this indiana female indiana jones like trapped in like a house or like a soccer mom like life kind of like Interesting. so i was a, an only child my parents kind of are like this untraditional hippies who they met in japan because they were my dad was in the military and my grandpa was in the military but they were like both from north dakota and they're like hit me up when you get back to north dakota so they met in north dakota and then like moved to bellingham and lived in like a bus and a chicken coop and built their first house together wait hold on yeah back up was the bus in the chicken coop no <laughs> two, separate two separate homes two separate okay. homes yeah <laughs> and then they're like we need to get out of the city bellingham was like bellingham was the city yeah so they yeah, like okay. drove to eastern washington found this little hippie commune of onion creek oh god yeah. they were up in onion creek oh, for yeah. a minute were you yeah. born in onion no creek? i was born in kettle falls oh, okay so they built a house in kettle falls i was born at home they traded my midwife services for a stained glass window that my dad made the services to yeah have so he born. was like uh. here's a stained glass window come and birth my child i could have swore cool. you were gonna say placenta <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah so i was born at home in kettle falls and then they our house burnt down intentionally or not i won't comment on but my dad kind of just did my dad had some hell's angels <laughs> like coming after him it's a weird what? story he sold dive our house in, dive in. it's so he sold our house to the hell's angels and then we built another to, house to the like the the, the the San Diego president or something. Oh. I don't know. Knowingly? Yeah. And they were like our neighbors. And so there was like some bad blood over some money or something. And they were like coming after him. Oh, no. Jeez. And he couldn't sell our house. So our house may have burnt down. And you were and you were alive at this point? I was, yes. Yeah, well. I was like five. And so we left Kettle Falls to get away from them. This is just what I've learned as an adult. I didn't mm. know that my house burnt down like possibly intentionally oh you you kind of always thought it i was thought a, it was just this accident. tragedy yeah, that yeah, happened yeah. to me <laughs> when i was like five years old my whole life i thought it was this tragedy now you're picking up the pieces as <laughs> yes. um, okay so there yeah there must have been like a candle left going or something i don't really know but who's to say yeah who's to say but um then we had already bought this property up here by chuila so like way out past browns lake and waits lake 
there's this 120 acres out in the middle of nowhere, like two and a half miles away from power neighbors. So that's where our property was. And so we lived in like a camper there for a little bit. And then my dad just still started building our house. We had an outhouse and I just kind of lived in this construction zone of a house all my childhood. And it like started as this little cabin and it just became this like gigantuous, like massive, almost like mansion. But it was like this artistic, weird conglomeration of pieces all put together. There was like a bomb shelter, like a greenhouse with a wood fire hot tub and just uh, all these weird like spiral staircases and cool. wood fire hot tub is another good excuse for an accidental burn <laughs> yeah, <out. right. laughs> yeah so ironically I was baking and i fell asleep in the tub <laughs> yeah <laughs> so like karma came back and we sold the property to somebody else and they burnt the house down for insurance money whoa which, <laughs> hold up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so you're telling me if you all of a sudden get a van and your <laughs> yeah, new yeah, house, house just burns happens down. to yeah. burn down, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Well, we'll maybe edit that. <laughs> we'll edit that you're section out of the podcast. Here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Seriously. So. So, uh, talk to me about the van thing. Yeah. Because um, that's a trend that's kind of happening. It's a big trend. Yeah. Quite a bit. It's and the pandemic. It's like what we, doing all of our, all us travelers want to do is we can't travel international is we want to just get in a van and like go to national parks and. Well, let me tell you about a friend of yours who has a van <laughs> that you can borrow whenever you'd like. Okay. I even have a little platform, bed platform up there. Oh, yeah? Okay. I do feel like it's a little bit too ghetto, though, for your fancy <laughs> self. Your, <laughs> far, sure. your pharmaceutics <laughs> she, aren't... <laughs> she needs some I could check it out a little bit, maybe. <laughs> it was pretty nice when, when we went on a tour Wait, one here's time. a scoop. Here's a scoop. I'll let you deck out my van mm-hmm. any way you like. Okay. Uh, and and then I get to keep it. Then you get to keep it. Okay. Is that fair? I'll think about that. Steve, what's the ruling on that fairness? Totally fair. <laughs> totally fair. <laughs> How many miles are on that thing? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> 866,000? How many miles do you think are on it? Uh, it's a diesel, right? Mm-hmm. 300? 230. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's got some life in it. It's left. got some life in it. <laughs> Bought it when it had 99,000 miles nice. on it. And we put... I mean, that thing... that We call her Charlene. <laughs> Uh, she's she. I painted her like an ice cream sandwich a few nice. years back, and um, she's the most trustworthy vehicle I've ever really? owned. In my, like I have so much love for that vehicle. I've never had th- that much love for an inanimate object before nice. in my life. <laughs> but whenever anybody gets in that car, I can just se- I can. There's just just like, cause there's been leaks, you know, and there's yeah. mold all over the stuff and. <laughs> Like the, the the flooring's coming up, yeah, the door doesn't this open rust. The shit. door doesn't open. Like it's a no. shit rig, <laughs> you know. But uh, but man, I love her. Yeah, I love her. So, anyways, if you want to borrow okay. it and drive to Nelson, okay. BC, I'll probably break down if I get too far. Yeah. No, she's trustworthy. Once okay. you get the thing going, <laughs> it's actually you got to look out for when the car's been sitting for more than a couple of days that's when you that's when you run into trouble gotcha charlene, charlene doesn't wake up as quick as you'd like her okay. to but man once you got that thing going it ain't stopping <laughs> reminds you, me of me that's right that's one yeah. steve steve yeah. takes some time to get going in the morning especially after a windstorm <laughs> but once he's going dude you can't stop this locomotion baby have you done any um domestic travel jess this summer Outside we did of, like, yeah like this Alan. summer was kind of what made me like want a van it, yeah. we just road trip so yeah yeah we went all over um like oregon idaho mm-hmm. uh, went down to yosemite tahoe we literally fell in love with tahoe yeah it's so beautiful oh yeah tahoe's oh my God. rad oh God, so it nice. is rad yeah. so yeah i was like this is so much fun we just put a bed in the back of my car yeah and slept in the car and just pulled up to lakes and different places and just mm-hmm. slept and yeah, you ever, been to awesome. gla- you ever been to Glacier? Yeah, I guess? love Glacier. Uh, so where rad. is that? That's close by. Montana. Right? It's only like four and a half hours away. Wow. You gotta Let's go. go. Three it's if so you're in rad. my van. Yeah. Do you right want to come? <laughs> yeah, I'll come to Glacier. <laughs> Sweet. We got to set up so a camping rad. trip. We all live too close to... I, mean, I say we. I don't. I live in New York City. <laughs> I Dude, pretty much live here. Okay, now. there's so this so thing sweet. happening with Julian. I know. <laughs> He's on, like, I still live in New York City. I do. I have a backpack full of clothes. Are you paying rent there? 
Yeah. He is still paying rent. I have, like, literally, I have a stack this high of mail just sitting on my desk right uh, now. That he's up. I just have a. I have my life is there. I have a few house plans. <laughs> In New York City, and uh, you should just move over. Yeah, Am I, I right? Keep hearing it from everybody I've here been trying. I've been chirping in his ear. I'm like, bro, there's some cheap real estate over yeah, here. Yeah, right. You get. I was I looking. Got a at house for sale. <laughs> yeah, I might buy it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thinking about it. That house is cool. I've never been inside. Oh, but you I've seen, I've seen so, inside. so Jess, I I'd, I'd like to maybe pick your brain a little bit about like the optimal life. <laughs> <For you. laughs> hold on hold on i'm thinking dude molly <laughs> <laughs> just all the time just like a, the some time. molly drip yeah, let's just get um, high as shit uh what like what because you, you I, I think knowing you as well as i do um you you love to travel you love to blog you love to write you love to experience new things mm-hmm. um but then there's this, it's so funny because there's this, like, I, you know, I follow you on the Gram Gram. I'm yes, like, your life looks so epic <laughs> on the Gram Gram. And it's not like, it's not epic, uh-huh. right? But like, I, but uh, the other day I called you and I'm like, we, <laughs> we had, a, I'm like, Al, I'm working. <laughs> I, I know, you're like, you're working. You're like, we've gone by your work and yeah. you're like in a lab coat oh. and you're like, so fish. Yeah. Um, is your optimum situation a little like foot in both of those doors? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But, but but it seems like you try to be pretty transparent with all that oh, stuff yeah, as well. No, sure. I'm not saying you don't hide it. Yeah. No, I I complain and bitch about it on Instagram all the time. <laughs> but yeah, it's for sure like I am trying to find the balance, and it's always a battle because mm. I definitely I'm at a point where I'm like. And I don't want to be ungrateful because so many people don't have a job, don't have the ability to travel. I mean, I'm I'm financially secure at the moment, not mm-hmm. on wood. Um, so I don't want to be ungrateful. I'm totally ungrateful. But right now, the last few years, I've just been feeling this overwhelming desperation for more freedom in my life. I just feel trapped by my job and a house payment and I know I just built a new house and it's so stupid it's counter tr- counterintuitive to like what I want for myself which is to live in a van down by the river <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it because you've, uh, is it because you've tasted that a little bit yeah and you I know, think so like what's ca- I think what you're so. capable of doing yeah because I feel so like guilty saying that because so many like billions of women throughout history have had zero freedom right and it's like here I am living this totally rad life and I should be completely grateful, but I just feel this like inner pull to, to at least know that I did a couple things that I wanted to do in my life, which are live in a van and live in Europe. And I just want to like be there for a year and just have the, not a travel, not like a vacation mentality. I just want to wake up and like work on my computer and, you know, do things at home in my little apartment in Lisbon, Portugal or something and, mm-hmm. and feel like I'm a part of that city for mm. a couple months or something. Yeah. I just want to live there and get a better taste of culture and sure. and move around a little bit from city to city and spend some time in each of these places more than a couple right. weeks. Yeah. So. C- c- sorry, Alan, correct me if, if I'm wrong, but the, uh, the occupation of being a pharmacist mm-hmm. probably you feel trapped because it's totally. a great gig yeah. and it, you don't necessarily mm-hmm. seem like you have to work too much. Right. I don't. Yeah. And you probably get paid well. And yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, it's yeah. Cush, I work four days a week, problem. like 32 hours a week. Um, and that's like my max. I mm-hmm. don't ever want to go more than that. How does it work with, uh, pharmacists? Mm-hmm. Um, if you take a year off, is it like a, professional athlete where like trying to get back in the league after you're like oh, i'm just gonna sit it out because aren't drugs and like the chemistry of yeah. pharmaceuticals constantly changing are you having to learn yeah, always that's definitely part of my concern yes yeah. for sure and it's such a competitive field now there's so many pharmacy schools pumping out pharmacy students mm. and especially in spokane we have a pharmacy school right here with the wsu spokane campus yeah there's tons of pharmacists competing for jobs and they're picked up just instantly everybody's competing for these jobs so yeah if i walked away from mine for a year i would be very concerned that i wouldn't be able to come back and find one wow so so if you do you kind of want to you want to do it right you want to walk away from it and or or is that yeah and i'm also kind of looking into remote pharmacy work there are 
occasional remote pharmacy jobs where you do things on your computer and and work remotely. So that would be like my ultimate still get paid a pharmacist salary might be less than what I make now. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But be able to do it from home or wherever I go. But the ultimate goal would probably just be to have your blog kind of do the thing for you. For sure. And help you travel because yeah, you can I like as a blogger that. you can like go across the country and mm-hmm. if you have the following then you can be like hey like I am Jess Carpenter and I have <laughs> this Instagram page and like I'll post about your thing and like can I stay so, here Yeah, I wanted to actually ping, ping you about that yeah. Jess because I'm I'm super curious about your experience with that yeah. is that a reality or yeah. is that just our perceived reality You mean like working with brands and things like, like that I'm a I'm a uh, influencer Mm -hmm. (laughs) not me personally yeah but like there are people who uh i i would imagine that it happens more frequently with females totally because well i don't know why but it just seemingly probably ratio wise yeah there probably are more uh but is that a is that a viable option this like I'm gonna travel constantly and and blog yeah. and just like post about is. my it, I mean I don't know for products? me that it's necessarily a viable option, but yes, I have plenty of friends who really yeah and make like friends le- is like, a relative term these days, but yeah, like legitimate income. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely! Wow, yeah, yeah for sure. Man, um, and blogging it. itself is pretty can be really lucrative just from uh, affiliate marketing. So when people book a hotel, um off of like a recommendation they click a link and there's a cookies that last for however long right same with like amazon affiliates and a little stuff. paper trail that yeah. shows where it came and from and so i that's where i get most of like my blog income is from affiliate income with like booking.com so gotcha i recommend awesome hotels that i love and people book it or book something else and then i get a little trickle of money from that so it's great. Yeah, it's really awesome. Wicked. I wish somebody would invent a way to... I have to click OK. I get it. The cookies are following <laughs> me on it's every fucking European, website. Yeah, like two years ago, there was a new European law that passed. And that's why it's all we all have the cookies acknowledgement now. Big thanks yeah. to Europe. Yeah, it's annoying. I don't no. even know what cookies are. <laughs> it's like, chocolate it's like chips. data collection. Like they collect all your data from your use the user information of who clicks on their websites. Uh, it's like a it's essentially like a paper trail yeah. of like how you got cookies? here. Oh, no. Kikis because Hansel and Gretel, dude, they were <laughs> breadcrumbs. Leaving them kikis. Yeah, They're breadcrumbs. breadcrumbs. Yeah. They aren't cookies. They could have well, been called yeah. breadcrumbs. Favorite cookie, go, Jess, because you are a sweet aholic, uh, dude. You are you <laughs> are the skinniest Sugarfoot. human Sugarfoot? I've Sugarfoot? Sugarfoot's what Paul and Sarah call me. You're oh, sh- oh Sugarfoot, yeah, it's a really great name for you. I'm going to lose my feet to diabetes. <laughs> oh, God. My she cousin's a surgeon and bonkers. he deals with that daily. Yeah, it's bad. No, um, homemade, like, um, like molasses cookies or peanut butter cookies. Oh, yeah. Paul's do you make peanut a good one? Yeah, I make pretty good cookies. Yeah. My uh, sugar cookies with frosting. My mom makes a good cookie. Yeah. She makes a good cookie, cookies but cookies are the best. Oh, they're oh. so nice. God, they're good. I make a good apple pie. That's my forte. That's what you go for. Yeah. When are we gonna hang out and have you cook us one? I'll make an apple pie anytime. Come on up. Let's do it this weekend. Greg will be up. Oh, Greg makes a damn good Greg cookie. Greg makes everything good. He's a, an incredible cook, but uh, old Gregor boy, I remember, <laughs> have so many fond <laughs> memories of like coming out of some festival tent, mm-hmm. just taking an er- like morning dump, <laughs> which morning dump for me when I'm on the road is like 1230. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And I see this like <laughs> extension cord coming from some like some backup generator behind <laughs> our artist tent mm-hmm. and i follow the the extension cord it's it's going directly to the butt what is this why do we have an extension cord going this extension cord is, goes 300 yards i'm exaggerating uh up the <laughs> all the way back to our bus so that greg he's in no shirt hairy as fuck <laughs> making cookies like chocolate chip cookies to give out to that's all awesome. the other bands at the festival. Aww, okay. that's so so sweet. adorable. Wearing yes. like American flag spandex and making cookies. <laughs> Shout out to old Greggy Earls, man. He's the Greggy best. Greggy Earls. Love that guy. My best memory of him is um, at Family Field Trip last 
not this last year, but the year before, where you guys all did Waterfall, TLC Waterfall. Yep. Oh, so oh, good. And he was he in that eagle costume. So well. Yeah, he did the I rap the so book. good. Yeah, he was oh. one of my favorite Greg Ehrlich memories is at that same Stone Family field trip. I come around the corner and Greg and Dan Spaulding are trying to learn the horn part for <laughs> Waterfalls, but Greg has a melodica. Do you know what this is? It's uh-uh. like, it's a thing that Mark Sampson always had. You blow into it and oh. it has a keyboard. Oh, yeah. It's like the most annoying instrument of all time. <laughs> um, I don't think they ever figured it out because huh. I, I didn't think it made an appearance. But That was a good year despite the snow in September. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good. Yeah. Shout out to Stone Family Field Trip. Oh, it's going yeah. to be, be up and running next year yes. for sure, dude. Yeah. The best. Once these vaccines get distributed. I'm getting mine tomorrow, actually. You are? I'm scheduled for it, yeah. Just because you're in the in the biz. Yep. What do you think of it? Give us your give us your I'm pharmacy. I'm excited about it. I mean, I'm I'm apprehensive just at, you know on a personal level because, I mean, I just don't want to feel like crap afterwards. And sure. I know which one are you getting? There's the a Pfizer. Few, you're that's, getting the Pfizer yeah, one. What's the, the one the clinic has? So. Isn't there? There's one that like I keep hearing is a little bit like oh, I don't know. It's it's not the Pfizer one. It's the Moderna. Moderna. I was going for Moderna because I have stock in Moderna, but. I'll take Pfizer. I doubt your specific, like, <laughs> singular <laughs> vaccine <My best. laughs> is really going to do gonna much for that stock, stock yeah. bro. She's just hoping it was going to do well, though. Um, <laughs> wh- what is it, it going to allow you to do once well, you have it? Well, nothing until I get the second one. and right. then which is what, two knows? weeks away? Uh, three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah, but and then there's still no. There's still no. We have a couple. We have a couple. Yeah. We have one specific. No, I will not name him. Uh, friend who's got both hits of the oh, old cool. vaccine and we he, can name him for sure no 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 we will not name him but he <laughs> is just Why? slinging the bone daddy he's oh, like yeah. <laughs> he's like it's 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 <laughs> just yeah. out i am mingling with all of my they got their own little like vaccine pool of people that are oh like, yeah it's like a status symbol you're like well, I, got I mean like they're just like i can't get sick yeah. so let's go and date <laughs> nice. He's yeah. been he's I been a how, serial how dater. Yeah. That there actually is though. Uh, yeah, I mean, ninety five percent sounds pretty damn good to me. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I'm yeah, cool. Totally optimistic. Um, I mean, I hope I don't feel like crap, but you know, most people feel a little sore and kind of maybe a little sure. out of it for a day or so. But I'm excited about it. I don't think there's necessarily going to be anything that I can do because of it. You know, I'm still right. going to absor- observe masks and social distancing because that's interesting. You know, that's, I mean, I haven't even thought know. about that. Like, yeah. once you get the vaccine, yeah. you're only wearing a mask for, for everybody optics. else to look. Yeah, you're just doing it for like, which is looking. Cons- r- in reality, cons- like so stupid. Right. Oh well. I wonder. Oh, maybe you should wear. Maybe there should be a new <laughs> symbol for like I've had a vaccine, which is like you wear the mask on your forehead or something, <laughs> or like around your neck around your neck then you just look like everybody else yeah especially in these parts yeah yeah look like everybody at walmart it's like if your nose is coming i saw this really (laughs) awesome meme the other day uh it was like a drawn you know far side gallery Mm -hmm. picture and it said um wearing your mask like this and it had a mask you know down and the nose was coming out uh, is like wearing your pants like this, and there's somebody's pants and their wiener <laughs> coming out. I saw that too. <laughs> 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 it's so perfect. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Which I've never worn my pants like that, but that was the first time I was like, I might. Yeah. <laughs> so let's awesome. try it out, dude. Let's try it out. <laughs> see what's right going now, on. I just can't see. Oh, um. So you want to live in a van down by the river. Yeah. Which van would mind. you like? Okay, because I am a van connoisseur. Um, yeah, I'm. so uh, this is like kind of embarrassing, but before we came here, Chris and I went to both the Mercedes dealership and the Ford dealership and like drove around the lot and we're like looking at all the... V- I made him. You guys have already had like a 15-hour <sighs> day because you've been up since yeah. 2 a.m. Yeah, <laughs> yeah basically. <God> <laughs> And I want to exactly. I want to know about because Chris is, seems Chris strikes me as one of the most patient. Oh my God! So individuals patient. of yeah. all Seriously. time. So patient. Like I <laughs> I can get rowdy, <laughs> and um, I've gotten pretty rowdy around Chris. Chris is just good to go. With He's whatever. just good to go. He's good dude. to go. Well, that's it's good sturdy. that you found He's a partner like that. He's lived through a lot of like yeah things you know he's just like good to go yeah this all is pretty mild i think so you know? where's your heart on which van are you set are you going cargo version or yeah, are you going cargo i don't want windows I wanna, no windows i want to choose my own windows make little ones you're gonna cut your own windows mm-hmm. out 
Wow. I mean, let's be clear. I'm not going to do anything. You're not going to. Chris is going to do it. <laughs> no, Chris isn't going to do anything either. I'm going to hire somebody who knows what they're doing. Oh. Yeah. Um, I got my my sights set on. What's the di- what's couple what, people. what's what are the differences between a cargo and what? The what passenger has like windows all the way down. So that would be like a casita, like. No, it's the same van. It's just got a shit ton of windows. A casita. Of of your a. a I don't understand like what's so like Alan's van. Right no, I just like I'm just trying to think about So like, like what take we're Alan's about. van and his van, if it's a uh-huh. cargo version, doesn't have the windows on the side. You know, like a FedEx van? Oh, yeah. Like a FedEx okay, cargo. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I just, just don't want all those windows. Because like if you're out. trying to sleep and be kinda like stealth and not have people looking in your van, uh-huh. I don't want windows. I want to be I able see. to like close them with a little curtain. Did you did you look into Zach Clark's yeah. van? Uh-huh. Oh yeah, I was so wondering he, about that. He yeah. had a cargo. What kind of ha- kind of van does he have? So he's he has, got a Mercedes. I think it's a Dodge, is it a Mercedes? Mm-hmm. Mercedes. I think it's a Mercedes 2500, okay. so it's uh it's the shorter cab. Yeah. Okay. But um I would get the ex- it's it's I want pretty the small in there. Yeah, I want the extended. I would go I would go extendy version. Not the super extended, but I want the middle size. Where yeah. are you going first? Oh God, I don't know. If it's summer, we'd probably head straight to Tahoe. Is it so wait, so this that? is like a le- just legitimate thing that's in the works now. I mean, I mean, I got to come up with like a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. You're like I'm banking on that <laughs> stimulus check. Yeah. You make on too that much Moderna money, bitch. Stock. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't getting no stimulus. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not getting a stimulus, unfortunately. No, all my but. buddies were like, "Yes, dude, I just got like 1,200 bucks." <laughs> I, know. And I was waiting. I was checking all my accounts. Never got it. <laughs> nope. Whoops. You know what that means? I didn't register. Oh, I thought you were going to say because you made too much money. <laughs> that's what I was hoping you would think I would <laughs> yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> but just, there's no way that's possible. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, this, is, this jacket's hand-me-down. Um, <laughs> I bought it for him. So, uh, um, as a pharmacy tech... But also, not a pharmacy tech, a, a pharmacist. Just don't get it twisted, Alan. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Why don't Checks they, hold awesome. on, let this back up though, because yeah. I just thought of this. Why don't they call pharmacy techs pharmacy assists? Because there's also a pharmacy assistant. There's Shut all up. Three. Yeah. So what, they should just call them pharmacists. But I'm the pharmacist. You should just be the farm. <laughs> <laughs> should be the farm assist. assist. Yeah, like Steve that. gets it. I hear him <laughs> chuckling over there. Um, w- Western, you 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 are a knowledgeable human. Uh, you, what's that? You are a well traveled um, individual who has seen uh, health in many different countries seen how people treat health in many mm-hmm. different countries mm-hmm. and you are a pharmacist in america mm-hmm. and you're a pharmacist in a portion of america that would probably be described as impoverished mm-hmm. which impoverished in america sure. is nothing compared to yeah. africa Rural community yeah. Yeah. um what's your opinion on western medicine What's Ugh. your do you, like? Where do you land? Do you? Ugh, I'm do so you, frustrated. Yeah, I'm so annoyed by it. Yeah, I just want, I just want to be, um, yeah, socialized medicine like Europe and so many other places in the world. I mean, it doesn't help that our price of everything is like completely arbitrarily set, like a hundred times higher mm-hmm. than anywhere else. It makes zero sense. At right. All. Um, so if we had normal prices where paying out of pocket for things was feasible, that would be great, but we don't, it's insanely expensive to get an aspirin and, you know, like a ambulance. It's like a couple hundred dollars or something. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. So it's gold, gold studded aspirin yeah. in those ambulance. Yeah. I, I think I was more, more so specifically speaking on the treatment of ale mm-hmm. of illnesses mm-hmm. in uh, Western medicine, because we, we seemed from my perspective mm-hmm. now, uh, it's very limited yeah. in literally everything, but it almost feels like we're treating the symptom oh, instead yeah, totally. of prevention, yeah. I- I- taking, taking preventions sure. to stop anything. We love from pills. Happening. Yeah, absolutely. We just, we're pill happy. Yeah, for sure. Um, but as someone who, who makes their living off of that? Mm-hmm. Like, where do you land on that? Yeah. Do, wh- where does that perspective s- seem um, to lie? I mean, I think I a lot of Western medicine I 
I think is great, obviously. I mean, it works and it's great. Um, there's probably some Austern, awesome Chinese medicine and Eastern medicine that we are underutilizing. Mm. Acupuncture has shown to be mm-hmm. efficient and or effective. Um, so there's definitely some things that we're not utilizing. Um, like, for example, like chronic pain mm. is one of the biggest ones. Right. We have such a chronic pain problem. It's just insane. And undoubtedly, these people have chronic pain. They have back injuries. They have been in car accidents. They have all these problems. But there's no, like, I mean, yeah, surgery maybe is an option. But there's just no other modalities that they're being encouraged to use or that insurance will cover for them to try. Yeah, and it's just frustrating. And it's weird because Americans have, like, this chronic pain issue associated with, like, posture. In like other countries, they like sit in different ways and hold themselves differently. Mm. And they work in, they work physically so hard for 12 hours a day that they're not necessarily experiencing the same chronic pain issues as we do. It's, it's bizarre. So I would, uh, yeah, phones all day long. Yeah. Something. I don't know. It's bizarre. I, I, I obviously would be speaking out of my ass if I equated it to anything, but, Mm -hmm. um, Sugar in America yes. seems to be a gigantic totally issue. Totally guilty. Yes. And, yep. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. It's in everything. It's everything. It's in literally I do. I think it's everything. Chronic. It's the and sh- culprit of everything. It's sugar is an, is naturally sings to um inf- no, inf- what's the inflammation. Inflammation yep. and seemingly what I'm hearing in the limited perspective that I'm hearing it is that inflammation is one of the leading totally. causes of m- most all chronic disease. hundred percent agree. Um, but I also think that, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know anybody who suffers from chronic pain. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I, I would be speaking out of turn if I reflected on it, but, yeah. um, I've always been curious about that with you, Jess, and mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever asked you because uh, you not you're v- very well traveled. You have a very open mind to mm-hmm. um, to yeah. the natural paths way of solving yeah. pain or mm-hmm. s- symptoms coming that that are caused by specific right. pains or chronic illness. Um, as a pharmacist, are you ever in, th- like, you don't have the right ever to be like, hey, so you shouldn't be take like, can you do, you, uh, where does that land? Yeah, I can. I mean, if somebody has a reason why they shouldn't be taking something, I would be um, negligent to not speak up. Okay. Because I heard, I was watching this Netflix documentary recently. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget what it was called, but essentially this pharmacist in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. no, excuse me, in New Orleans. Have you seen this documentary? No, I've heard of it, I think, though. This, 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 essentially, he was one of the first um, uh, signalers Mm -hmm. of these pill farms Mm -hmm. that were happening Mm -hmm. in Florida. Okay. Essentially, like doctors were just prescribing yeah. uh, opiates mm-hmm. like they were Skittles. Um, and he had lost his son to an opioid addiction. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a pharmacist. And he kept seeing these like people coming in yeah. with prescriptions to opioids that were, he was like, I don't think you need this. Right. And he actually chased it down. Like he was the detective oh, yeah, in the case, and he—I yeah. mean, he wasn't the actual detective, right? Yeah, but he yeah. like went and found right. out where they were getting these from, and like staked it out, I yeah. think. And, <laughs> um, but the impression that I got from the documentary was that he like completely overstepped his. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. his wh- 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 what's yeah. the thing you take oath? Like like yeah, Hippocratic or, oath is that yeah, the right term? I think we do. Yeah, we do take one. Um, yeah, it, there's definitely like a not a very f- straight line that defines where our boundaries is. Mm. And it's kind of, it's, we're, we're kind of put in a tough position lately the last couple of years because um, corporate wants us to almost act as like this intermediary that um, regulates how much or how many or, mm. w- you know, if you're, if it's a just prescription for these opioids and 
you know, it's like when you try to communicate with the doctor to kind of get some documentation as to why, mm. they are very defensive and, uh. you know, and the patient gets mad at you and they're like, this isn't your business, stay out of it. This yeah. is between me and your, my doctor. And they say that. And it's like, well, I mean, it is my business because I'm forced to do this, right. unfortunately. And so... Do you have the reasonable right to refuse? Yes. You do? Yep, wow. we do. Okay, we have actual not... documentation and our corporation will back us if we refuse something based on our own now, professional Now, as... When you say corporation, mm -hmm. is that... You work at a Walmart mm -hmm. pharmacy. Is that the corporation? Yep. yep. Gotcha. And they're very actually super supportive of that. So if we feel uncomfortable filling anything or doing anything they're 100 percent backing us with that so, oh well that's cool yeah. i didn't realize that that was a possibility yeah. i every time i've been to the pharmacy which is very few and far between mm -hmm. um it's just been like hey do you know what this is mm -hmm. yeah i know what that is you know I th it's for my <laughs> i get a puffer when i'm on uh -huh. the road because yeah. uh my lungs i have like a slight allergy yeah. i think or a slight asthma and he says, you know what this is? Yeah, I think, so. yeah. Was, I, no, I don't know what it is, but I'm supposed <laughs> to take it kind of thing. Um, wow, man. That, uh, you must be presented with a lot of. Yeah, it's crazy. A lot of interesting yeah. s scenarios with that. Yeah. But I really love my people. Like, that's one of the best parts of my job is I, I genuinely, like, I've worked at this particular store for, like, I don't know, eight years or something. And it's like, I've grown to know probably, like, half to three quarters of my patients like really well. So uh. I know them all. They all know me and it's, we've formed a pretty cool like connection. And, um, that would be something if I ever left my job, I would be pretty sad about because mm. I'd be like, I wonder if whatever happened to so-and-so, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. I wonder if they are still alive. <laughs> yeah. So I really, I care about my people. They're pretty awesome. And I love my coworkers. So is it, uh, is it weird to see your, well, I'll call them patients. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's the right to customers mm -hmm. outside of your work. Um, yeah, I see them sometimes just like at, in the store or at another store or something. And it's not like it's you go out to want moments. like drinks no. with them. No, God, no. It's yeah. I've, I've been invited. But yeah. No, I politely decline, but, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's kind of just like an awkward, like, hey there. Right. That's weird. We yeah. had a, our midwife who helped us deliver uh -huh. Rudy was a fucking legend. Uh -huh. Like just so rad. And Taz obviously connected with her because yeah. it's like the most important yeah. day of Taz's life was right. giving birth to her first child. Yeah. And uh, I remember Taz coming away from him. Like, I like to really love her. I Aww. hope she wants to hang out with me. And <laughs> and I was like, in, I was like interested in how that was gonna go. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because uh, she's like one of her dozens of people. Yeah, it's she like sees. one of five thousand right, babies right, that she's totally. delivered in the last four yeah. years. Who I'm guarantee all of those ladies were like, oh my god, she was. Like, <laughs> my mom delivered babies, right? And like yeah. my mom had so many friends uh -huh. who would just like say so many nice things about it. in the grocery store. She'd be like, oh, you delivered my 14th child <laughs> and you were so, you know, and I was like, and, and, uh, mom was always, always super kind yeah. about that. But, uh, I, yeah, I was interested in always, yeah, I think they did actually end up hanging out, cool. but, um, that's a nice little bit of shit vote for you, Jess. Well, that's I'm, how I feel about welcome. Taz. I feel like the second I met Taz, I fell in love with her. I yeah. was like, I want this woman to be in my life. She's like the coolest chick ever. And <laughs> I, I just love her so much. She's the coolest. So. She is rad and she She's loves awesome. you very, very much. Um, I could marry that girl. She's awesome. Let's go for it, man. <laughs> first, first, there's always a first. We get a van. I already have a van. So you don't need to get a, you don't need to get a loan for that. Like from a male's perspective, if I was a male, I would fall in love with Taz instantly because she's just like, all that she's just rad sweet beautiful cool she's just everything yeah it was pretty instant for me as yeah. well but then <laughs> <laughs> no she's the she's the best dude she's the boss she is. um jess thank you so much for like your consistency as a human and a friend to me um i have quite a few uh consistent friends but um none that i've known as long as i've known you Aww. and you've just always been there 
Like you just. Well, it helps when you give me free tickets once in a while too. Just don't, just don't <laughs> pay. I feel like. I don't do it. F- like you, yeah. As somebody who <laughs> does the shows that I do, I feel like free tickets to them is not that big of a come up. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but you've, you've, you've just, you've always been there. Like you've just, everything that I do, you are supportive of. I am. I've always thought like. I've known since you were however young when we were, you know, I was in college, you were probably in high school. I've just always known that you were one of the most talented, like charismatic like people. And I knew you were going to be awesome and do great things in life. So, well, that's, that's a very, very kind refre- reflection, <laughs> um, that, interrupted my reflection of you <laughs> let me gloat a little bit about you and quit talking okay. about no okay. um, i just want to say thanks for that kindness and that friendship and that like that steadiness like we have so many friends around us mm-hmm. and it's funny whenever we're at parties when when there's just something between you and me mm-hmm. that's like a little bit deeper i feel yeah. like than no, i have so many epic relationships with so many people but i think it was maybe that time we spent together right after mike passed Mm -hmm. and then also having such a relationship with you and mike prior to his passing that really connected me with you and i want to say thanks for that consistency Mm -hmm. and thank you for being willing to share your experience and your life and uh and sharing it with the wonderful people who listen to this podcast. Thanks for introducing me to so many rad people. I've met so many cool people like Julian and Steve and Laura and everybody. I've met so many rad people through you. Well, um, they are, they are better for knowing you. Oh, thanks. Truth. Thank you so much, Jess, for being on the show. We love you, bud. Thank you guys for having me. Right on. (laughs) Be well. Oh, boo-boo, did you just make it to the end of the video? Yes, you did. Do you want to see more videos just like this one, huh? Do you? Well, then head over to patreon.com slash live at the lodge where you can support the how goods of this podcast as well as the entire Live at the Lodge family. Yep, yeah, you're going to get exclusive merch, personalized shout-out videos. Me and Jules, we're going to show up at your house and baptize your nephew, huh? Check it out, patreon.com slash live at the lodge.